Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to all of you to Salt Lake City. Uh, you're here on a typical, beautiful fall day for us. And I hope you thoroughly enjoy your stay. And I wouldn't be mayor if I didn't say spend a lot of money while you're here. Uh, so I hope you'll, uh, you'll engage in, uh, in a lot of activities here. Uh, I'm thrilled personally to have you here. Um, I actually participated in IAP2, I think regional conference up in, in Idaho Falls probably eight or 10 years ago. Um, and um, so much of my professional career has revolved around uh, public involvement and public engagement. Uh, and I've got to tell you, um, uh, one of the reasons certainly that I came um, is because of a treasure of a person we have in Salt Lake and Michelle Strobe. So Michelle, thanks for the work you've done for us in Salt Lake, uh, for all the work that you do uh, to engage our community, engage people I know in other places as well. Uh, with the great work that you do. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about, uh, Eric and I are, are going to kind of tag team this whole, uh, this uh, presentation this morning. I'm going to uh, spend about 10 minutes, which I'm going to try to keep track of here. Uh, and Eric is going to uh, spend probably about 10 minutes. And then we want to engage you in helping us uh, move our uh, endeavors forward here in public engagement. So I'm going to actually turn on my timepiece here to help me keep track. Um, but let me, I'll start by telling you a little bit about my, uh, my background and why to me engaging the public is maybe the most important thing that uh, I do as an elected official, that we do as a city. Uh, in trying to make the best decisions for our community. Um, I, uh, shortly after uh, school, I uh, graduated from school, as was mentioned, worked for, um, uh, for Governor uh, Matheson, and we worked on a project that was uh, a, 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 the largest proposed land exchange in the United States, in the history of the United States. It involved state lands and federal lands. And uh, it was a controversial, as you might imagine, anytime you're talking about public lands in the West, anytime that you talk about affecting every single public land user uh, in our state. Um, and uh, government is never well received anyway. You know, anytime in Utah, if you come from Salt Lake, you know, you're from the Wasatch Front or Salt Lake and you're a suspicious character. Uh, and uh, so part of my job uh, from the time I started working on this uh, project was to earn the trust of people who were very skeptical about what we're doing and knew what they had and didn't know what they were going to end up with uh, in terms of their rights or privileges, permits, uses uh, on the public lands. Um, and. Um, and it took me probably over a year just to be able to engage in regular conversation with a lot of the elements and, and folks associated with, uh, with public lands in the state of Utah, because I had all of the baggage of being from government. We're here to help you, right? Um, and uh, being from the Wasatch Front and proposing something that was a dramatic change um, for so many people directly affected. Uh, and uh, little did I know that in the course of kind of working through issues, which I'm a sort of policy person and planner, planner and lawyer, and in working through issues that, uh, you know, I was learning skills oftentimes the hard way um, about how to involve folks and how to try to earn their trust and, and respond to uh, the legitimate issues that so many folks have in, a, in any endeavor this controversial and complex, and worked on that. And then, um, as was mentioned, uh, left state government, uh, started my own consulting firm, and took on really controversial projects uh, here in this region, uh, working on Wasatch Mountains planning uh, to the east of us here, and faced the same kind of thing, where um, I was working for Salt Lake City uh, as a consultant, and then working for Salt Lake County and working with the U.S. Forest Service, the three prime players in our mountains here, uh, with folks who were similarly um, very suspicious 
uh, who are very suspicious about decisions going forward. Um, and again, just kind of kept working through issues, you know, as we do, as you do in your world and your work. Um, then I, I ended up, I was on the Salt Lake City Planning Commission. I ended up, um, as my time was coming to a close, I ended up running for and getting elected to the Utah legislature, or serving the legislature, and I'm a Democrat, so it may surprise you, but I'm a minority in the minority party in the state of Utah. Um, and, but my goal was, of course, to get things done and to, um, both from our constituents and from a policy point of view for the state. Um, and so I work was working my way through things um, in the legislature on a regular basis, but uh, was invited to join an organization that some of you may be familiar with called Policy Consensus Initiative, PCI. Uh, they're now based out of Portland. At that time, they were based out of Santa Fe. Um, and I didn't know anything really about them. Um, a, a person who was the executive director um, invited me, and it's an organization that is intended to promote consensus building practices and focusing on elected officials um, and the role that elected officials can play. And it completely opened the door for me to an understanding that this wasn't just an exercise of practicality, you know, of how we build consensus and build coalitions to get things done. Uh, but there is this in whole discipline uh, associated with how to appropriately, meaningfully engage and involve uh, the publics in decisions. Um, in fact, Larry, you mentioned a revolution. Uh, the, the organization was and continues to be co-chaired by governors from two states, and it's intended to be balanced, Democrat and Republican. Uh, one of the co-chairs was John Kitzhaber from uh, Oregon. And it's a pretty small board. There are 15 or 18 of us, and we're out there trying to work both to understand issues and promote engagement in a way. And uh, what, what John Kitzhaber kept saying was, this is the real revolution that what we're working on in terms of trying to provide, to develop consensus decisions um, is, uh, is some of the toughest stuff to do in the political arena particularly. Um, and it's only gotten obviously much more difficult. Uh, but it is also the most important work we do. And, and the reason is because uh, I think all of us who were involved in PCI and as I've learned in our community of public involvement, uh, we are absolutely convinced and committed to the notion that we get the best decisions when we meaningfully involve the most people we can. And that's not just the standard folks who show up uh, at public hearings. Uh, it's not just the elected officials or people in the community who think they're important. Uh, and there are lots of those, as we know. Uh, it's involving people who don't normally get involved but who are affected or care, uh, which everyone does, about their community and where they live. Um, and finding ways to, uh, to reach out um, and engage people. Um, when I uh, ran for mayor, I, I'll just tell you one more, a couple more sort of quick stories, and then I want to turn time over to Eric and leave plenty of time for a discussion on what we want to set up for you here. But, when I uh, decided to run for mayor, it literally was the week after the election year preceding uh, the mayoral campaign year. And I was meeting with a group of close advisors and we were talking about what, what would we focus on in my candidacy that, uh, that we hoped, I hoped, would distinguish me and help me be successful. Because one of the things about politics is you can't serve if you're not elected, right? So we were working through the various issues that, uh, that we considered important for Salt Lake residents and businesses and, and visitors. And I kept saying, hey, I want to talk about meaningfully involving the community, about you know, how do we do a better job of engaging people and reaching out. And every one of my political advisors told me I was full of it, you know, and said, you know, you can't do that because what you've got usually with people is 15 to 30 seconds. Um, and in that amount of time, it is almost impossible. And I think they're right about this 
to talk about how you involve people and for people to take you seriously because people are so skeptical about government anyway. Um, so I did, I ended up taking their advice and dropping that from a primary plank in my kind of platform. And you know, I'm a planner, so I developed this real detailed agenda of things we were gonna do. And I was, we did this takeoff on me called Blueprint Man. It did cartoon character ads and stuff. It was kind of bizarre, but it got attention. You know, that's the idea, that's the way it looked at. But what was interesting to me was um, as we were in, as I was meeting continuously uh, through the campaign with different groups, neighborhood groups, interest groups, business community, uh, where there were forums and longer opportunities to talk to people about Salt Lake City and my ideas for the future and uh, of Salt Lake, that I would regularly bring up the topic of how important it was to involve people uh, and things that we could do and one, and one of the people, other people's ideas about what we could do to change um, uh, the way the public processes normally work in a way that was more meaningful. And I got incredibly strong responses. I'd get people coming up to me after those uh, presentations and discussions and saying, you know, I am so glad you brought this up. So the work that you all are involved in uh, is really, in my mind, at the heart of the success of governance um, and what we do uh, in trying to uh, make good decisions for our public. Now, I want to kind of end and then turn this over to Eric with kind of one more story to illustrate how difficult that is in this environment uh, today. Uh, we all know DC is insane. Um, they just spend their time harping at each other and trying to spin out the best broadcast of the day um, and get very little done. Um, too many state governments are that way as well, in my observation. Um, but at the local level is a whole different ballgame. Uh, when I get together with my colleagues, whether it's mayors or other elected officials and others across the country, uh, we're all excited about what we're doing, about what's going on in our community, about this healthy competition we have going on. And of course, everyone brings different styles, you know, based on their background and, and, and general approach to things about how they do it. So we don't often, uh, unfortunately, I think, talk about how we make decisions, um, or, or often enough, at least, we don't. Um, but um, when I came into office, uh, my predecessor had been kind of a lightning rod character in the community and was very controversial. He was kind of a meteoric uh, a personality and, and people either hated him or loved him. Um, and um, so when I came into office, having a very different style, as you can tell, um, I, I was received so well by folks who were just tired of the acrimony that had been generated in the community. Um, and so for my first year plus, it was just such a great honeymoon, you know? It was like anything I proposed, it was like, oh, this is wonderful, you know? <laughs> just because it was like something different, you know? It wasn't poking the finger necessarily at somebody else. And, and, um, and then uh, we, one of the things we decided early on is the year I ran for election, a bond election failed to build a new public safety building for Salt Lake City. Um, and uh, as I looked at it, even before I came into office and spent time with folks, it was clear to me we had to get a new public safety building. It literally was falling down around the people trying to work in it. It was never designed for the purpose it served. And so I decided we should take it on and that we should, um, uh, get it back on the ballot uh, for consideration, but we really needed to develop a new proposal for a public safety building. And so we went through this uh, very engaging public process to, uh, to come up with what should be in it and what shouldn't be in it. And then I decided we should also try to decide on the site because we needed to come up with a number for the bond, a dollar number for the bond. And we needed to, um, to do that, we really need, we didn't know where the site was, so we knew what it was going to cost. So I said, you know, we're going to include uh, the site for the public safety building uh, as part of our decision making. Well, from a pure political point of view, it was probably the stupidest thing I could have done because 
any of you have been involved with making decisions about transportation corridors, siting, right, or facilities in a community, you know that that is um, fraught with controversy, inevitably. It's just the nature of it. It's like, why on my street? Why not there? I don't want it here. We, and people develop worst case scenarios. And sure enough, that's what happened. And we, uh, we kind of narrowed it down to two sites and presented it to the public, and there was this great uproar that almost killed the whole effort um, over one of the sites. It was on Library Square, just east of the public safety building. We thought we'd done a careful job of picking sites, but uh, we obviously hadn't from the point of view of some folks in the public. And um, uh, we went through uh, probably six months of just intense criticism and got a bit overwhelmed, particularly in the social media. Uh, we weren't really prepared for the power, this was five years ago, the power of the social media in affecting decisions. And plus, it was the first time, really, that the media had a chance to kind of jump on me in a big way. And so we went through this, uh, this process um, and could not get good information out there. We tried to present information, but look, this is the reality of these two options we're looking at, and um, we want your involvement. We did, I'm gonna guess, a dozen different kinds of forms. We had all these on-site um, um, uh, kinds of proposals and efforts and engaging practices in all the ways you guys operate using best practices of the time, but it did absolutely no good because the media was on to the controversy, right? And you all see that in your work regularly. And so as we get into the discussion after Eric speaks, I think what we want you to be helping us with is in the, in the realities of the political world where we're making decisions, um, how do we best uh, move beyond uh, what can be hysteria exercised in the media uh, and a move towards strong, effective, uh, and the best public solutions. Because the easiest thing to do sometimes is to respond to the hysteria that'll break out on an issue, which may have some very legitimate kernels of, uh, of both legitimacy and, and good points but uh, oftentimes get caught up in its own tornado. Um, and, uh, and how do we move uh, beyond that in a way that uh, meaningfully uh, gives us the public involvement that we need and want for good decisions uh, and, still, uh, and still not lose track of the fact we need to make the best decisions we can. It's not just for us in the political world of taking the easiest course of action. Um, so we go through this over and over again. You go through it in all of your work and all of your worlds. Uh, but we're going to call on you after Eric speaks here to help us um, look a bit about, about um, what we can do. Um, I'll mention that um, just sort of we've done, uh, we've made open government and transparency uh, a core of my administration, um, although it's not necessarily recognized by the public. Uh, from the time I came into office. Uh, in my first uh, speech uh, as part of the city, we started uh, an effort called Salt Lake Solutions. Any of you familiar with Oregon Solutions um, and the work that they've done? It was modeled and patterned after that, and those folks came down and helped us set up our Salt Lake Solutions effort. Michelle um, I took that over for us and guided us through that. We, we have picked projects consistently through the, uh, since then to uh, to use that approach. Um, we've had an open government and transparency initiative from the beginning that have come up with a whole series of changes, both with what we do to engage the outside community, but maybe more importantly, to try to bring into city government a culture of engagement and develop the public engagement guide for, uh, for city government as part of that. Um, and have done a whole series um, of other things to try to I reframe what we do. And Eric's going to talk a bit about um, <clears throat> some of the things that we're doing to tr 
to not only try, I think, to hopefully be breaking new ground in the way we reach out into the community and involve more people. So thank you all for being here. I'm really